I ain't never been this way, this insane Dopamine swimming all around my brain You hold the force, plus me the haze I know I said I want eye, but my eyes are glazed over You know I don't drink anymore You bitches ain't go for your poor You're all over twisting on bill size Be sucking, I have some more, more, more And I'm just a singer, I'm sure But then I finish right Hello everyone, my name is Amira and welcome to your digital 420 broadcast rally brought to you by THC. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we are broadcasting this very special version of the 420 rally to the thousands of you at home who would usually attend the event and protest in Hyde Park, London. Our aim is to continue to give the cannabis movement a platform to campaign on and to spark online activism, especially now that many of you are stuck at home due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We hope you're all safe and our thoughts go out to those of you affected. We've created a programme here today that's jam-packed full of projects we've worked on, politicians we've interviewed and even a live DJ set for you to vibe to. We've also included industry updates that we feel it's necessary to share as so many people are still unaware of all the details emerging out of the growing cannabis industry here in the UK. And before we start, we'd like to say a massive thank you to everyone who attended 420 Hyde Park last year, where we hit another record-breaking year of 50,000 people coming together to stand and protest current cannabis laws. Here's a short clip from our Instagram recapping what happened. Now, to kickstart the programme, we wanted to share our manifesto, which forms the basis of what we are doing. Together, we have the power to bring change, and the best way to do this is with a unified voice. We have seven points to share with you as to why we think cannabis should be legalised in the UK, and we hope to be able to convince you to support our message. It will give millions of people who are in need of cannabis for medical reasons the access without implicating them in criminal conduct. There are an estimated 1 million people who use cannabis on a daily basis, making it the most commonly used illegal substance today. 1.4 million claim to be using cannabis for medicinal purposes, but we have an environment where you can be prosecuted and no real legal access other than an extortionate prescription that only the very few who qualify will have access to. We think we need to reduce children's access to cannabis by introducing legal age limits for cannabis use. I think we can all agree on this one, that restricting access to young people and children should be a priority, and legalisation is the only sure way of protecting them. To help explain this a bit better, we want to introduce a video from one of our partners at VaultFast, who investigated further into young people's access to cannabis and released a report called DM for Details, which is available online. In this report, VaultFast aimed to bridge the gap in understanding how social media is being used as an illicit marketplace for drugs and the effect that this has on young people. Social media provides a shop window for drug dealers, where typically what will happen is dealers will advertise their drugs on Facebook, Instagram or Snapchat and then ask their friends or followers to direct message them if they're interested in buying them. Worryingly, one in four young people see drugs advertised on social media and most of what they see is cannabis. Unchallenged, this problem will only get worse, with drugs becoming further normalised and accessible to young people. To lessen this risk, VaultFast recommends that schools have honest and open conversations with young people about what they see online and how they can keep themselves safe. We need social media companies to take this seriously and to work in partnership with the police to get these accounts shut down. And as cannabis is the most widely accessible drug on social media, we need to take it out of the criminal market and legally regulate it. Yay! 
So for those of you hustling online and moving bait, please consider how children and young people could be exposed to this and the effect of unregulated flowers on their developing minds. Not everyone knows how to grow properly either and a lot of quality is lost by the wrong people trying to flip for profit. Our community is filled with quality information out there and companies such as Product Earth provide legal and insightful discussions around a community who are all striving for better quality material. Their events are opportunities for you to network with like-minded, passionate individuals who will share their knowledge and give you access to the correct information. Speaking of community, we would like to take this moment to honour two dear friends of cannabis, Charlotte Feige and Black the Ripper, both sadly passed away this month. Charlotte Feige inspired a CBD movement across America due to a catastrophic form of epilepsy. Black the Ripper has always been fighting punitive cannabis laws here in the UK, pushing for legalisation. Charlotte sadly lost her life to COVID-19 and Black sadly passed away whilst in the Caribbean. Their deaths have been felt across the world and our love goes out to their family and friends. To Screech directly, we would like to offer you any support you might need during this time. Music artist Fecky wrote a very moving tribute in light of this news, which we will share with you now. People like me, they ain't got people like him. Do you know what I mean? Our mentality is from the block. We fought for our ends and we felt we always saw it as our ops. But he always saw who the real ops were. You know what I'm saying? The governments and the, the, the establishment that put us in these positions that we are in. And that was his energy. Do you know what I mean? My brother, man. RIP, bro, man. You're in a better place, bro. It's fucked down there. Thank you, Fecky, for using your voice to honour Black the Ripper.
Up next, we're joined by Dr. Danny Gordon, a medical cannabis expert. Hi, my name is Dr. Danny Gordon. I'm a double board certified medical doctor and I've treated thousands of patients with medical cannabis or cannabis-based medicines. I'm also the current vice chair of the UK Medical Cannabis Clinician Society. And I'm here to talk to you today about medical cannabis. So the first thing people wanna know about medical cannabis is what actually is medical cannabis? It's a term that's thrown around, but what do we actually mean? Well, medical cannabis is actually a term for a broad group of medicines, actually a whole class of medicines. Medical cannabis used to mean back in the day when, you know, even 15 years ago, we didn't have commercial preparations for cannabis medicines. It just used to mean really using cannabis in a smoked form to alleviate medical symptoms. Now those cannabis-based medicines, we hoped when the law changed, were going to be available to everybody. That's what everyone thought was going to happen. Unfortunately, that's really not the way it has turned out. In fact, most people who need to access medical cannabis in these forms still have no access to it. The NHS has not supported it yet, and the NICE guidelines, which kind of determine what doctors prescribe, also has not supported medical cannabis in a broader sense. When I first started prescribing medical cannabis, I was actually really scared because I was worried about what the college of physicians was going to think of me. I was worried about what my colleagues were going to think of me. And I actually started really gently. I started prescribing for things like chronic pain and anxiety that had not responded to any other treatment. But then as my knowledge grew and as my confidence grew and I really learned from my patients, I started to prescribe for many, many other things too. And what I learned is that cannabis medicines, medical cannabis, it's not just for chronic pain and epilepsy or neurological conditions. It can be used in such a wide range of chronic conditions. I've also used medical cannabis in conditions like cancer pain and palliative care and just alleviating suffering. This is really a quality of life medication. This is to alleviate suffering as well as a very serious medication for things like treatment resistant epilepsy, even in children, the very high CBD forms of cannabis can be incredibly effective. Even when the best drugs we have to treat these forms of epilepsy have failed or they have not been sufficient to control the disease. So what does someone have to do if they wanna obtain a prescription for medical cannabis in the UK right now? Well, right now you still need a referral from your GP or a specialist to a medical cannabis clinic or a doctor who's willing to prescribe a medical cannabis product for you and they have to be a specialist. That means right now GPs in the UK cannot prescribe your first prescription of cannabis medicines. That being said, the good news of all of this is there's no condition that's barred from a prescription of medical cannabis given that the doctor prescribing for you thinks that it's the best option for you. Thank you, Danny, for your insight. Now, if any of you are looking to speak to a healthcare professional, we are planning a live phone-in style show next week with three doctors from our partners at London Canna Group to explore how you can obtain a legal medical cannabis prescription here in the UK. Please express your interest with the sign-up form linked in the description or comments below. And now back to a few more reasons why we should legalize cannabis. We can create an estimated tax revenue of £1 billion per year, which could and should be spent on public services. That's a lot of support the health sector could benefit from, and during these unprecedented times, there has never been a stronger call for making sure our NHS is able to continue saving lives. This will also shrink the illicit cannabis market and its associated violence and exploitations. It's all long trying to pick up a 3-5 on road in what can be a challenging situation sometimes. The traps changed and we encourage all criminal enterprises to consider looking into the legal cannabis industry that is currently growing and learn how to transition into a legal space that just works better for everyone. Please feel free to get in touch and also to attend workshops on just that, details of which will be available on our socials and newsletters. THC already helped the existing cannabis industry showcase their platforms. Here's a commercial the team put together for First Wednesdays, a monthly cannabis networking event. First Wednesdays is the European Cannabis Network. Home to entrepreneurs, investors and industry professionals. First Wednesdays connects founders with finance, recruits teams for new opportunities, and connects professional service providers with new clients. With more than 1,000 registered members and over 400 guests attending our events each month, 
Our goal is the professionalization of the European cannabis industry. First Wednesdays is your chance to get involved with the people who are embracing this exciting and rapidly evolving space. Don't miss the next First Wednesdays in your city. Sign up at firstwednesdays.eu. Hmm, looks quite bougie. If you are interested in exploring video production for your cannabis business, please feel free to get in touch with the THC creative team who specialise in making bespoke branded content and are open to collaborations that are for the culture. Today we would like to premiere an example of this by showcasing a short preview we wrote with Organic Liberty, a plant-based food designer and the creator of the cannabis croissant. Playing, playing, playing with yourself, messing with your mind. Playing, playing, playing with yourself on the phone at night. Pay attention to the details. I'm saying it louder again. Organic levity and TAC. You speak for yourself. Organic levity just came out just from that. Just something like a natural need from the humanity. But everything I do in my lifestyle is just purely organic. Then levity, it was a, a, a name, a word was already alive by the Rasta movement. Honestly, London chose me basically, you know? The idea is it was pretty much to learn English, to find a way out, and to learn in another culture. Because what I do as well is like pure health. We're not using any wheat, soy, chemical, coloring. It's purely from, from nature and is, is the deep research. Cannabis is, um, as an ingredient is just pure magic. By combining plant-based and cannabis, if you realize, do the research, cannabis is the key. Cannabis got the full answer. And then you combine it in high, high quality of food to fight sickness, healing, to stay focused, to understand our purpose. Nobody can touch that. It's not comparable. You can't fake that, that energy. What people expect when they come in for a dinner party is just like, another world. I like to call it like that. At least pay the Melvin is just a pure magic. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. When a woman is talking, you're supposed to be quiet. That's more like it. <laughs> Welcome to your wonderful evening. We hope you've had a, an amazing time. We have a few performances for you and some much more deserved food. So please stay tuned and enjoy. <laughs> I wanted love, then I'm falling on my feet, and I say, I wanted love, but I'm pushing it away from me. I wanted love, then I'm falling on my feet, and I say, I wanted love, but I'm pushing it away from me. It took losing all sense of our direction. I kept her head under the way. It took more a little time in the reflection Or are we wasting our day? When you're calling on my phone Say I'm my lips and you're back on Say so you've been waiting And I couldn't take it So I leave to see you there I get back and you'll know it You've been waiting And I couldn't take it, no, no then I'm falling on my feet and I say I wanted love, but I'm pushing it away from me. I wanted love, then I'm falling on my feet and I say I wanted love, but I'm pushing it away from me. 
You can watch the full film right after this broadcast on our channel. To learn more about cannabis-infused food, do check us out on our socials for our next specials and hit up Organic Liberty to check out the art that he creates. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe as every one of you help make what we do a reality. Now we're going to hand you over to London Canna Group for a UK cannabis industry review. They're a comprehensive consultancy that helps entrepreneurs start, run and grow their cannabis business through brand consultancy, retail, wholesale, e-commerce and satellite events such as Europe Canna Expo. Hi everybody, happy 420. My name is Sal Noble, CEO and co-founder of London Canna Group. The struggle to obtain medical cannabis has meant that many patients have been seeking alternatives such as CBD. In 2019, it is estimated that over 6 million people in the UK tried CBD. There are many obstacles for CBD brands. Many governments across the EU have not clarified their laws and regulations on what products can be sold. This has also been made difficult by the fact that many traditional advertising platforms do not allow the promotion of cannabis products, meaning that brands are struggling to educate and inform their consumers. I think it's unbelievable that in 2020, medical cannabis patients are still struggling to get the medicine that they need. The UK government needs to move quick on this. And when I say quick, I don't mean the next two to three years. They need to move quick on it now. Patients don't have the time to wait for legislation and access to open up. Last year, we saw over 100 cannabis events throughout Europe and at least five major ones in the UK. The biggest one being Hyde Park 420, which saw over 50,000 members of the public attend. The summer was also the first time that European Cannabis Week took place. And Europe's first ever medical cannabis and CBD trade show took place at London Excel. Trade shows are very important to bring businesses and consumers together and learn how they can push the cannabis industry forward. Last month, we took the cannabis conversation to Ireland. Here's a short film that the THC team put together at Europe Canna Expo Dublin. Here in Dublin, this is the first ever medical cannabis event. And what this does is it brings awareness and it gets people like Americans to come over here and talk about what our experiences are. And we collaborate with people in Europe as well as around the world to be able to strategize how we can move this forward together. The easy events are very beneficial to the cannabis industry because we have to be together as one. The more companies can join together in events like this, sharing stories and experiences, it's going to help the cannabis industry. Given it's still a very young industry, coming to networking events like this and really meeting with customers and stakeholders and, and thought leaders is it's hugely important. It's been a really good networking opportunity. I've met a lot of familiar faces on the circuit but also made some great connections with new ones as well. London Canna Group are an experienced team of business accelerators and offer comprehensive consultancy. They understand the importance of both brand image and audience engagement at every level. They effectively communicate brand stories through proficient marketing, putting their clients at the forefront of the consumer eye. So make sure you check them out and alternatively, do also check out bloomjobs.com if you were looking to work in the cannabis industry. Bloom have placed many people in the industry today and have a wide offering of opportunities available. I fancy myself as a master grower. Just out of curiosity, how many spliffs have you smoked today? Or maybe you're cleaning out your dab rigs or filling your cones getting ready for 420? Either way, whatever you've prepared, tag us in a photo and we will be sure to bring you a vibe by 4.20pm. We have a live DJ set being streamed right here after this broadcast. We have received unprecedented political support this 4.20 and we believe that cannabis legalisation could be around the corner in the UK. Therefore, your support for the movement is critical at this time. To help us all understand a little bit more about where we currently are with this, Earlier today, we had calls with multiple MPs across all political parties to hear their thoughts on where we're at. We're fortunate enough to be joined by Norman Lamb, former Health Secretary for the UK. So Norman, what brought you to the conclusion that the UK should legalise cannabis? I just felt that the way that we approach the whole issue in uh, the UK makes no sense uh, and, and that it also has in a way, disastrous uh, consequences. Uh, we criminalise very many people, which then blights their careers, and that still happens. People still get cautions, and sometimes 
uh, get prosecuted. How do you think we can achieve genuine patient access to medical cannabis? Trust adults to make their judgments. If they are experiencing uh, some sort of condition, whether it's fibromyalgia, arthritis, uh, or if they have Parkinson's or whatever it might be, uh, if they feel that they can benefit and they approach their GP and their G GP is prepared to confirm that they have this condition, then I think that should authorise people uh, to access a range of products without uh, forcing it through the traditional medicine licensing route. What can our viewers do to campaign on these issues? What message would you like to give them? I think the message is that change is coming. The only question is when, not if. Uh, things are happening at great pace in many other countries and it will happen here, but we can accelerate the pace of change by consistently lobbying uh, our members of parliament and the government uh, uh, of the over overwhelming case for reform. Now we're here with Jeff Smith, a member of the Labour Party. What brought you to the conclusion that the UK should legalise cannabis and why did you decide to come out publicly? Now there might be different solutions to different drugs but on the specific issue of cannabis, um, cannabis is you know it's a part of daily life for many many people in this country. Um, most people use it without a great harm. That's not to say there aren't harms associated with, um, with, with, with smoking cannabis but um, there are arms associated with lots of things. So I always liken uh, cannabis, the way we treat cannabis, to the way we treat alcohol. So there are harms associated with alcohol, and the way that we mitigate those harms is to regulate it, make sure that the product is safe, make sure that people are getting it from a sort that isn't an organised criminal gang. And I think we should be treating cannabis in exactly the same way that we treat alcohol. We regulate it, we legalise it, and we make sure that the, the supply... Uh, and the production is, is safe for people to um, use. Can you tell us a bit about what you've done to campaign on these issues? Myself and a colleague have set up um, a Labour campaign for drug policy reform, um, which looks at issues across the board and there's no kind of, um, you don't have to sign up to any particular um, policy platforms to, to want to have this debate and talk about it. But one thing that I think all of us involved in it think is, is right is that cannabis should be legalised and regulated. And in your opinion, how close are we to full legislation? If you'd have said to me a year or two ago that we would have, or a couple of years ago, that we would have medical cannabis legalised, I would have said it would take maybe five years, and yet it happened very quickly. Uh, I would probably say the same thing for, for recreational uh, use of cannabis. I think we're some way away at the moment. But once, once it starts to happen, people, people can change their minds quickly and things can move relatively quickly. Uh, well, have a good day. and enjoy uh, 420 um, but keep the political pressure on we need to change minds I, I personally believe that the arguments are um, unanswerable um, it's just a matter of convincing people and changing minds so um, keep up the good work Siobhan what brought you to the conclusion that the UK should legalize cannabis to me, it's a really good opportunity that I can make this one of those issues that I just keep talking about during the campaign and actually already, um, I think it's had an impact. So, you know, I've had coverage in the Evening Standard, for example, for pushing for um, legalization of cannabis. Um, the Guardian have done a write-up of this as well. And, and Sadiq Khan, towards the end, before we went into lockdown, Sadiq was starting to respond, I think, to that kind of pressure. And he was saying that potentially it was time to have a conversation at least about drug reform. So although he hadn't gone as far as me, and calling for legalisation, I think it's one of those things where you can really make a difference if you factor on this and major on this during the campaign. And why did you decide to make cannabis legalisation a key pledge of your mayoral campaign? So for me, you start by tackling this in London. And what I'm arguing for and calling for is let's pilot a legalised market in London. Um, and you could use a mayoralty, you know, the four years of a mayoralty to actually run a pilot in London to see if that makes a difference. And this is not a, a hugely controversial thing anymore. You know, you've got other countries that you can learn from in terms of how they've brought in different systems and how they've brought in regulation and what's worked and what hasn't worked so well. And it just seems to me now that London is a place where 
we shouldn't be kind of debating even anymore, should we do this? We should be asking, why haven't we done this? And I think there is a real need now and a real urgency to do something about this and we should start here in the capital. What message would you like to give them? So I guess the message from me is I think things are changing. I think there is a realisation that we need change and I think change will happen. I think we are, um, sounds obvious, but we're closer than we've ever been, I think, to having a change in the way we approach drugs policy in this country. Um, my message would be I'm pushing for us to start this in London, so let's make that happen. Now we're speaking with Crispin Blunt, a Conservative Party MP. So in your opinion, how close are we to full legislation? There are lots of different legalisations of cannabis. And the only uh, legalisation that has undergone so far is uh, medical cannabis. Uh, but of course, that has then thrown up a whole uh, lot of questions about the implementation of uh, delivering medicine from cannabis. Uh, my organisation, the Conservative Drug Policy Reform Group, is in the process of examining that and will publish shortly an examination of how we've got on over the last 18 months. Uh, but what we want to do is to look at the evidence that's now coming from those jurisdictions around the world that have legalized for recreational adult use. And we need to learn the lessons uh, from uh, what they've done about the right way to legalize, the right regulations to put in place and the right license conditions to apply. What can our viewers do to campaign on these issues? Well, what I want to do is engage uh, people who uh, have an interest in this area to move on from the politics of protest uh, to the politics uh, of delivery. And we are going to need uh, delivery around evidence. And what has changed now is that there are uh, at least two countries, Canada and Uruguay. There are uh, 12 American states in the District of Columbia, all of whom have begun down the path of legalization of uh, cannabis for recreational use for adults. They've all got different license regimes and different regulations that they're putting in place. And I would like the people who, are, uh, who want to see change in this area now get involved in assessing the evidence that's coming out of those jurisdictions. What can our viewers do to campaign on these issues? Uh, delivery and, the, and meeting the demand for cannabis, which is uh, sadly not going to go away. But if we have a state regulated and licensed uh, system, uh, then I think we can better protect children. We can get products uh, and public information and public health uh, understanding around those products and make sure that people are then capable of protecting themselves um, from uh, the dangers that are associated uh, with uh, overuse of cannabis as there are with any other drugs. But what we do know, of course, is that compared to uh, many other drugs, those dangers are, are very considerably less. And indeed, uh, no one has been recorded as a dying of uh, of, this, of this particular drug. We believe that legalising cannabis is a progressive civil rights issue that will be beneficial for society and it is our responsibility as a cannabis company to always help this conversation along. We are urging all cannabis companies to join in this effort to be heard because our time is now. We can take an estimated £2.5 billion a year out of the hands of criminals and the black market and into the regular economy. Legalising cannabis would open the door for legal opportunities for so many of us to convert into and would create mass opportunities for many people. We want you to think about how many types of roles there are already out there in the world and almost all of them will need to have their own cannabis position once reform takes place. Criminalising people who consume cannabis ruins lives and creates barriers in accessing help and support. We also want to announce that any future career opportunities here at THC will have an open door policy for those who have had criminal records against them for drug offences. We will not discriminate and we believe it is our responsibility to help those who have been criminalised and charged for the possession of drugs. This has been ruining life chances and being able to get regular jobs, so we urge our government to completely wipe the records of the thousands affected by this and even release all the people in prison who have been put away for cannabis-based crimes. And finally, by legalising cannabis, we can free up police resources that can be used to prevent and solve more serious crimes. A large amount of police resources are wasted on cannabis-related offences. We are now seeing a growing amount of support from forces unofficially decriminalising cannabis by not prosecuting consumers or medical patients anymore. 
Next up, we would like to take this chance to share more information with you on the growing trend of CBD products that are available on the market today. And our friends at Canna Club, a retail store in the heart of Shoreditch, will share some key facts with you. Hi, my name is Idris and I'm the Business Development Manager at Canna Club. We started Canna Club to increase the accessibility of CBD and cannabis derived products. We stock a huge array of products, anything from oils, capsules, balms, other topicals such as skincare, edibles such as chocolates, honey and gummies, and a whole lot more. One important thing that we do at Canna Club is make sure that every product in here is UK compliant. One way we do it is checking COAs. So COAs usually test for the cannabinoid content, heavy metal, pesticides and microbial content. On top of checking their COAs, we also third party test every product that comes in here. During this period of social distancing, we are still available online and feel free to reach out to us if you do have any questions for the Canna Club team. And we hope to see you soon. So remember guys, it's always important to buy from trusted sources who go that distance to follow compliance in such an unregulated market to ensure we aren't consuming any heavy metals, pesticides or bad microbial content that should be removed when making CBD products. In addition, the platform that Canna Club uses to educate consumers on many aspects of the cannabis plant is crucial to help change perspectives on the array of benefits attached to it. Hi, Tyler Green here, wishing you all a very happy 420. This is a very special day for our culture and usually we get to celebrate it in style by assembling en masse at a dedicated public event. This year, however, we're all staying in and doing our bit to stop the spread of COVID-19. I wanna to talk to you about why it's important to be proud of our culture and lifestyle. There will come a time when folks look back on our era as one of darkness before the light of legalization, as an era of uncertainty for patients and recreational consumers alike, and as a time of discrimination against people from all walks of life who choose to consume cannabis. We know that legal doesn't equal moral. We know that cannabis use isn't antisocial, and we know that those who argue for continued prohibition are either ignorant or ill-informed. Other parts of the world have shown us that a greener future is possible and in 2020 there are plenty of places that cannabis lovers can visit and enjoy. Olympic medals have been won, film, TV, musical scores written and our understanding of the cosmos and of the natural world has advanced all thanks to the minds of people who share your love for this amazing plant. Every day that understanding grows as leading minds explore the multitude of possibilities that cannabis has to offer in science, in medicine and in health. But this isn't enough. We must fight for our right to consume and grow cannabis in the United Kingdom for ourselves and for everybody who has ever faced adversity for consuming a plant which has never killed a single person outright. We have science on our side, morality on our side, mortality on our side. Our adversaries' arguments are outdated and increasingly the public are waking up. So as you celebrate 420, please also spare a thought to the better future we must all work towards. Thanks. With this, 420 is now fast approaching and for those of you who are participating from your homes and gardens around the world, it's almost time to spark up. If you are smoking, please ensure you have sufficient water close by as it's important to stay hydrated and maybe keep some snacks close by for the inevitable munchies. With this, before we leave you, we wanted to recap on our seven point reasons to legalise campaign, which hopefully makes enough sense to be able to convince our government on a complete rethink on how they should be handling cannabis. If you feel like there are other points that you would have liked to be put forward, please do share with us your thoughts in the comments or on social media as we are generating a report with studies that we're using to make a case for the cannabis legalisation. Lastly, we would like to call for more unity in our communities when fighting for cannabis reform. This isn't a fight a small handful of people can have on their own and we must all do our bit together to publicly call for an end to prohibition. We need support from all cannabis businesses, the people who have had their lives improved or saved by cannabis, the brave MPs willing to stand up for society, knowing it's the only way forward for progression. We need our voices heard and we urge everyone to support each other as we are all fighting the same fight. There are many faces of cannabis and it's a human one. Fight for change with us and we hope next year we will be in a much better place. We hope you've enjoyed our digital broadcast and look forward to seeing you throughout the year. 
Happy 420 from London Canna Group, Vault Fast and the THC team. Yo, what's up, people? It's your boy Asher D. I want to pick up the High Club, Clement Marfo, people all around the world, Kingston, LA, Paris, wherever you are. Enjoy your 420. Light one up. And also, rest in peace, Black the Ripper. Be loved and missed by a lot of people, my bro. Fought the cause. You know, enjoy your 420. Celebrate this one for him. Bless. Yo, we saying it's Big Zoo. Happy 420. Enjoy, my people. Lady Ice here, and I want to say rest in peace to the big man, the king, Black the Ripper. Happy 420, my dog. Dog, sir. BDO is the fence link. Hey, look at me. Wait, I can't see you, look, man. 420 must go on. 420 must go on. Sir, Clement Marvel, and rest in peace. Black the Ripper. There's no one. Clap for me, clap for me. Crush it, really, don't match strap for me. Not paying cash, you know I don't take. No skunk up on high grades or casually. Look what the week man done, yeah. Look what the week man done, yeah. I was on my best behavior. Look what the week man done, yeah. Look what the week man done. Look what the week man done. I was on my best behavior. Oh, oh, oh. Would you I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I